and welcome back gamers this is SKS with let's play alter ego the live simulation Bowser game um, last time we left off we made it to another stage of our life and we have a new uh, some new buttons we are in the adolescent stage so things should be uh, getting really interesting now we now can do work risk relationships and school so things should be pretty exciting here let's take a look at our statistics and familia still up in 80 we're super smart and super in physical shape 64 social vocational our calmness is down our confidence is up our gentleness is down so we're a bitch expressiveness is 88 so we tell people what we think and we don't think much about it we're not very thoughtful but we are trustworthy so that seems to work out really good so let's go here and let's do a school one. Oh, there's none of them we can do right now. Okay, well, we'll get a little older. It's ten minutes until the bell rings for Jim. Mrs. Black, otherwise known as Orca, can be such a pain with her calisthenics. Everyone is going to the mall after school, and the last thing you want to do is sweat like a horse. No one will go near you. Imagine taking your shoes off in the shoe store and knocking out everybody in place. Gross! This is going to take some quick thinking. Honest, creative, and go to gym or try to avoid gym class. Hmm. Let's be creative and try to avoid going to gym class. You think of several excuses, but illnesses and injuries seem to be the most likely ways to get out of going to gym class. You approach Mrs. Black with a look of false pain and woe that she has seen a million times more. What's the matter with you? She says menacingly. Tell her that you have energy. Tell her that you are having your period and don't feel well. Tell her the truth. I'm a woman and period is the way to get out of everything. What's the matter with you, young lady? Don't you know that vigorous exercise is one of the best ways to get rid of those monthly cramps? Go over there and do 50 squat thrusts. You'll sweat the pain right out of you. Well, that didn't work out very well. Great. Can we take a risk? Your friends decided to have to eat a large meal and dinner and sneak out without paying. Uh, no. We're not doing that. What's this? You're too young to take on the responsibility of a job just yet. Sad. You're in one of your ultra cool moods. While cruising through the house, you bump your foot on a piece of furniture and let out a swear and let a swear word sneak out. Your mother calls you in from the other room. She says, "Did you say what I thought you said? Should we be truthful? Less than truthful? Too cool to care?" Um, and we're in an ultra cold mood, so let's be too cool to care. Tell her you did and apologize. Tell her you didn't. Tell her you did, and so what? Tell her you did, and so what? So what, she says. Her eyes seem to glow for a while, then she gets frighteningly calm. She speaks almost with a wither. So what, she says softly. I'll have to remember that phrase for when you ask me to drive you somewhere, or buy you a new blouse, or cook dinner. The list extends well into the twilight of the evening. Oh my god. This mother knows exactly what she's doing. Can we do a relationship thing? Let's see. Meet somebody, break off with someone, go on a date, have experience... Uh, let's, we don't have a partner, so I guess we have to meet somebody. Where would you like to meet somebody? In school. John, Jim, Mark, Peter, Brian, Joff, Jess, Frank. Frank sounds like a good name. Frank the Tank. You have chosen to meet with Frank. His characteristics are trustworthy, gentle, not very calm, not very happy, not very confident. He is not very good looking. You meet with Frank in the cafeteria. After talking to one another for a while, or giving each other time of good frustration, you talk about going out. The big moment comes when he finally asks you for a date and you accept. A little while later, you enter the school selling bee. Because you have already shown remarkable intellectual potential, you win easily. Intellectual sphere gains even more. By the way, the winning word was snidoosh. I have no idea what that word is. Okay, that's great. So, oh, we're dating Frank. Excellent, I guess. Let's have a familiar thing. The family dog has been acting a little peculiar lately, and no one can figure out why. Some of your fellow family members suggest that maybe he should be given away or worse, put to sleep. Dad delivers an ultimatum. The dog must shape up or ship out. You're the only one in the house who could take the responsibility of getting him back into shape. Feel like taking on the responsibility, don't feel like it. This is my dog, so we're going to feel like it and train the dog. You spend every available minute keeping an eye on the dog, rewarding him for good behavior and keeping him out of trouble. One day when you return home from school, you smell what could be only the dog's byproducts. Number two to be specific. That's poop for you gamers. The smell is emanating from your parents' bedroom. Oh no. 
You enter the bedroom to find a dog sleeping peacefully in the corner and a sculpture sitting squarely atop Dad's favorite pillow. Fortunately, no one is home. You can dispose of the pillow and play down later. Try to wash the pillow, dispose of the pillow, and admit the truth. We're going to dispose of the pillow and play dumb. Later that evening, everyone gets quizzed on the possible location of Dad's pillow. No one in the house has a motive except a dog. Dad threatens to get rid of the dog. Um, tell the story, plead for the dog, citing examples of recent good behavior, or keep your mouth shut. Um, let's tell the story and plead for the dog. Uh-oh, this is taking a while to load. No, no good will come from this, gamers. Later that evening... Oh, your father becomes furious. He screams, I knew it! That mangy animal has made me miserable for the absolute last time. The following week, the dog is given to your Uncle Fred. Aw, that's so sad. Let's have a, uh... Uh, let's, uh, go on a date. Have an experience. You and Frank have just had a nice romantic date. He has treated you well all evening. Movies, a bite to eat, the works. Now he's feeling very romantic, but you really feel like talking. When you tell him this, he gets very annoyed, saying, We talked all night long. He looks at you with that begging, pleading look in his eye. What do you want to do? Keep encouraging him to talk? Throw him out if he insists on acting like a caveman? Give him what he wants. Hmm. We're going to give him what he wants. You give him the Frank's primitive urges, but don't feel quite right about it. After he is satisfied with what he has gotten, he tenderly kisses you goodnight and leaves. You don't know why, but all of a sudden you feel like crying. No, you must be stronger! A few people got a little while party playing spin the bottle at a friend's house yesterday. As a result, your neck looks like it was stung by a pack of wild hornets. As you walk out of the bathroom, Mom inquires about the curious-looking marks. Let's be, uh, out of it, uh, let's be out of it and give an excuse. You've chosen a well-tested and time-honored adolescent defense to avoid talking about something that might be anxiety-provoking. Putting yourself up in the clouds makes you inaccessible to either real or imminent imagined dangers. It works fine, but it only has one drawback. While you're flying around up in the sky, your real feelings are driven deep inside you. They can service at any time when they might catch you off guard. As a result, you may suddenly get depressed. Whatever. A little while later, a family member has begun to show signs of serious emotional problems. In the last two weeks, he has tried to commit suicide twice. As a result, your parents are told that he must be hospitalized. Emotional and familial spheres now show marked decreases. Surprisingly, your social sphere declines as well. This is because t people tend to shy away from relatives of those who have emotional problems. This probably seems very unfair to you, but unfortunately, it's true. Well, that sucks that that just come out of nowhere. I mean, geez, thanks, game. Here, I'm trying to grow up as a healthy female, and it doesn't work. Uh, your mother has recommended a new hairstylist that says she will make you look great. Yes, we need to look hot with all of our hickeys on our neck. Yeah, this is really going slow today. I'm not sure what's causing that, gamers. His name is Mr. Gene. He mentions that the person who cut your hair last was a barbarian. Okay... He tells you that he's about to give you an entirely new look. Okay. While he's cutting, he mentions that it's a shame that none of the young girls appreciate the hairstyles of the 40s. Oh, God. Let's go for it. Snip, snip. Don't look up, he says. Oh, God. Please try not to look up. You're disturbing my concentration. Snip, snip, snip. Oh, this is really... He starts to blow dry your hair. For a second, you catch a glimpse of the floor, what seems to contain a huge amount of your former hair. Oh, Lord. Well, you can't stop now. Snip, snip. When you're finished, you look at yourself in the mirror. You look sensational. All of your friends love it. Five guys ask you for dates. Happiness, calmness, and social characteristics all rise. Sweet. Let's, uh, go on a date, have an experience. Uh-oh. Here we go. You're with Frank, and two of you are getting romantic. You're alone in his room. His parents aren't home. Frank looks at you glassy and tells you, I think we should try it. Didn't we already do that? Say, I'm not ready yet. Say, no, firmly. Say, let's kiss a little more for Say, okay, and start taking off your blouse. Bam. That's the one. You're eager to please him, and he is eager to be pleased. The two of you explore each other's bodies and experiment with different techniques. After you're finished, do you feel guilty? Not in the slightest. It better have some... No, it's not going to say anything. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's go back to this. You're at a drugstore purchasing some feminine articles. You're about to bring them up to the cash register when you notice that Mike Barty is the cashier. I don't know. 
who that is. Let's just be normal. Um, let's bring him up. If he can't handle it, then I, whatever. Mike sees you and gives you a big hello. While he's packing your stuff, he throws in two packs of gum from behind the register and smiles. He didn't even seem to pay attention to what he was ringing up. A little while later... One day when you're stepping out of the shower, your father walks into the bathroom and sees you standing there stark naked. His face turns white, and he is frozen in his tracks, staring. You are mortified as you try to cover up. He avoids you for about three days, trying to hide his own embarrassment. What the hell? <laughs> so random. I don't... Oh, Lord, have mercy. Can we do a school thing? Okay. Miss Andre, your French teacher, who everyone in school claims is a lezzy, has asked for your help cleaning up her office after school today. She asks you in front of a whole group of your friends to begin to look at one another and make faces. What will you do? Um, we'll tell her we'll help her. This makes you the subject of unbearable teasing. In her office, there's a picture of her husband and son, Jacques or Jacques, or Jacques Cousteau, who is a great-looking guy about your age. She explains that he goes to a private school. You comment on how handsome he is. Miss Andre smiles and offers to invite you over so that you can meet him. Ooh la la. Sweet. All right, can we get a job yet? No. No, it's so sad. You and your friends have gone to the shore for a beach party. It's late at night. One of your friends has, suggested, has a suggestion. He says, let's go skinny dipping. This does not bother me at all. Take off your clothes and go. There you are, stark naked, when you realize that everyone else has chickened out or has left his or her clothes on. How do you feel? Unashamed. Doesn't bother me. You aren't going to let them get the better of you, even though some of the guys are really getting their jollies. You put your clothes back on and sit down. Oh, well. What a... Frank, we need to have a situation. There's a new girl in school. Her name is Ginger Clark. Well, she's not going to be better than Mona Lott. She's a perky, busty bleach blonde who wears very red lipstick almost all the time. Two weeks after she arrives at school, she has dated every eligible guy and even some of the ineligible guys. A friend informs you that yesterday Ginger asked Frank to help her study. How do you feel about this? I'm going to be insanely jealous. You run around accusing both Ginger and Frank of fooling around behind your back. Frank has no intention of doing anything like that. You make such a fool of yourself, as a result, they become a close friend, and Frank eventually drops you for Ginger. Well, fuck her. A little while later, you found a new way of expressing yourself through the way you comb your hair straight up. Your family constantly asks you when you're going to change back to normal, but you're generally tolerant of it. That has no... whatever. Let's... Let's see. Um, do we need to go on a date? I don't have a present partner. So, let's meet somebody else, right? Meet someone. We will meet someone outside of school. Let's see. Peter. I like his name because every girl likes Peter. Trustworthy. Very gentle. Very com Not very gentle. Very happy. Moderately confident. He is not very good looking. Well, I can't date anybody that's good looking. Uh, good person going out. Finally, we go out. Yay. Hooray. We are made dating a guy named Peter. Mona and Peter. <sighs> You're on a school bus on a class field trip, getting cozy with your newest beau. Guess it's Peter. Uh, do we be amorous but discreet, but indiscreet, not amorous? Um, let's not be indiscreet. And we're going to begin a makeout session on the bus. That's it. Mark off the territory so all your friends can see what's your property. Unfortunately, you don't have the social skills required to get away with this kind of behavior. Everyone thinks the two of you are disgusting and immature. What? A little while later. Okay, something just pops up. At a huge family gathering, one of the relatives from your father's side of the family makes a snide remark about your physical appearance, saying, I'd never let my daughter wear makeup like that. It makes her look cheap. Hmm. Because your familiar sphere status is high, your mother defends your style of dress and individuality. She's happy to inform this relative that the only lack of taste she perceives is shown by someone who criticizes another on superficial qualities such as look, as opposed to more enduring qualities like character. Yeah, mom. Interesting. Peter, we need to go on a date and have some experience. You and Peter have spent the evening watching television upstairs in a room. It's a quiet night, and two of you snuggle into each other's arms and begin a nap. You are disturbed from your peaceful sleep by the sounds of birds chirping out the window. You open your eyes and realize you have fallen asleep for six hours. It's 4.37 a.m. Your parents will have a fit if you come home this late. What will you do? Now, I've told this story before that I have done this before. With nothing bad going on, just stuff, and, like, the guy's... 
the girl's <laughs> wow i'm really backwards the girl's father was like if you ever come home that late again you will not be allowed over here um so what as a female this is better um Tell Peter he better think of something because it's his fault. Walk into the house and face the music. Try to sneak into your house without fi anyone finding out. Um, let's tell Peter to think of something. Peter is already nervous enough without placing the burden of getting you out of this jam squarely on his shoulders alone. Attempt to sneak into the house, face the music, tell him you'll handle it yourself. I'll handle it myself, then. Sounds like you're being needlessly hostile. As a matter of fact, Peter's sick of it. He gives you the boot. Well, forget him, asshole. A couple of your friends have against someone who purchased a bottle of very cheap wine. They are excited about the idea of getting drunk. You are in the basement of a friend's house. I'm going to be excited. And we share the wine, walk away, act like you were drinking the wine, but no. Nope, we're going to share the wine. There is a one out twelve. There is one twelve ounce bottle of wine to be distributed among fifteen girls. You take a few, few sips. What do you feel? Perfectly normal. Of course you feel perfectly normal. Not even a young child could get tipsy on two sips of wine. Many of your friends act goofy, but you would probably just sit around watching them and laughing. Hmm. Interesting. Mei Li is a new Chinese student who could barely speak English. She is peers awkward, and is not aware of modern styles of dress, and is a bit clumsy. Everyone in school has begun to make fun of her. Um, we're going to be unconcerned and try to make friends. What? No, I could be okay. We'll be unconcerned and ignore her. There's no reason for you to put yourself out for this person, especially when it means the risk of losing your friends, right? On the other hand, a new friend from a foreign country might have been able to give you a lot more than she would take in the long run. Ugh, another excitement. A little while later, on the back of a cereal box, you see a contest to name the cartoon character that represents the cereal. You enter, and because you are very bright and very creative, you win! Your prize package consists of a new bicycle, a hundred dollar gift certificate, and a one year supply of crunchy marshmallow chewios. Sweet. We need to meet somebody. Uh, meet somebody near home. Um, let's meet Josh. Moderately trustworthy, not very gentle, not very calm, very happy, not very confident. He's very good looking. The good looking one is not very confident? Huh. Okay, well, let's go on a date with him. Sweet. Continuing on. Lots of socials in this adolescent stage. I guess that makes sense. You're listening to the radio and you hear that the guest disc jockey is, get ready because you'll absolutely drop dead from the shock, which is more than one human can possibly bear, Adam Bombay. Of the famous Adam Bombay <laughs> and the nuclear waste. The show is accepting calling questions and comments. The callers can win autographed albums, money, inexpensive prizes. I'm smart, so I'm interested, and I will call the show. Adam Bombay. It's so much better than Adam Bomb. I know it's Adam Bomb, but still. You get a busy signal. We're going to keep calling. Duh. That's what happens when you call in radios. I mean, she's. We're going to keep calling. Keep calling. You're greeted by the voice of the regular disc who says, Hi, how are you today? We're here with Adam Bombay. Do you want to ask him a question, or do you want to have a crack at one of our valuable question or prizes? Uh, we're going to ask him a question. Your heart is pounding a thousand miles an hour. When you hang up the phone, you can neither remember the question nor the answer. One thing you do remember is that Adam said you sounded older and very beautiful on the phone. He said you have a sexy telephone voice. Could you scream? Yeah. Let's go on a date with Josh. Josh has spent the afternoon visiting friends of a family with his parents. When you see Josh, he can't stop talking about Joanne, their daughter. When Josh and Joanne were younger, everyone joked about how nice it would be if they married when they got older. Isn't that cute? Anyway, Josh goes on to tell you that Joanne grew up to be gorgeous, a model, in fact. How do you feel about this? I'll be fine, no big diggy, a bit, no diggy, no biggie, a bit threatened, insanely jealous. Uh, we're going to be a bit threatened. That's understandable. For one, understand it, Josh, he's not the most trustworthy type. I know that it's difficult here, but it was one of his characteristics when you met him earlier. You should ask yourself why you'd want to stay someone whom you might not trust completely. Is it just you being overly concerned, or is there really a danger that he might abandon you for the first gorgeous available woman that comes along? Dun dun dun. Dun dun. A little while later, a guy that you've been dreaming about has asked if you want to go for a soda after school. You have no money, you're not sure whether he or not will pay for it. After all, you're not seeing him or anything. Because you have excellent social skills, you remain calm. You tell him that you're trying to lose some weight, and the mere sight of food around you would make you gag. You convince him to just hang out and shoot the breeze. Hmm. 
Interesting. Uh, let's see, you're out with your friends and you neglect to keep track of time. You're three hours past curfew. Eh, big deal. You arrive home and notice that all the lights are off. Maybe everyone is sleeping and they won't notice you sneaking in. Continue. You fish around for your keys while standing at the door. I've done that many of times. Not as a female. The door opens. Oh, shit. Squeak. Yep, that's happened before, too. No one seems to notice. You take off your shoes and tiptoe toward your room. I'm going to fall on something. You're almost home free when... You hear a noise. Dun, dun. It was the pipes clanking. Thank God. You sneak into your bedroom and no one is the wiser. Hooray! We're getting good at this. Let's go on a date with the untrustworthy guy. Josh has just won an all-expenses-paid trip for two to a fantastic ski resort in Vermont. He has invited you to go along with him. There is only one problem. Your parents absolutely refuse you to take an overnight trip with any one of the opposite sex. What will you do? Lie to your parents and go anyway. Argue with your parents argue with your parents with Josh there for support. Sit down with your parents and try to have an adult conversation about it. Tell Josh it's not worth the trouble. He should go along. Let's lie to our parents and go anyway. The skiing is marvelous, and except for the fact that you might feel a little guilty, the two of you are having an enjoyable and romantic time. On the second day of your vacation, Josh tells you that he's going down to the ski shop to pick up the skis he won as part of the package. He will ring the phone when he is finished, so the two of you can take a whirlpool bath together. About an hour passes before the phone rings. You're a bit sleepy from relaxing. Uh, pick up the phone. Let the phone ring. You know who it is. Let's pick up the phone. It's Josh. You go down and have a whirlpool bath together, and it's very romantic. The two of you finish your vacation, come home, and no one ever finds out what you did. Sweet, because that's what you do when you're growing up. Tara, a foreign, a foreign friend from Jamaica, asks you to come over to her house for dinner. Your first course is an interesting-looking kind of soup. You take a sip and find it delicious. You inquire what kind of soup it is. Tara, her mother, pies with a proud smile on her face. Turtle soup. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, well. Uh, horrified, ambivalent, open. Let's be open. Try to eat all the soup. Eat a little more of the soup. The more you eat, the more you think of those cute little pet turtles you once had in your room. You politely explain that the soup is good, but very filling. Your charming char social character hides your disgust, and no one is the least bit offended. A little while later, dun dun, it's summer vacation time. Because you have excellent social skills, you have an exciting summer with your friends, traveling, romancing, and probably getting into a bit of trouble. Yeah, well, time for a date. Do 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 do. You and Josh are both thinking through your decisions about going to college. Josh wants to go to college as a string pre strong pre-med program. There are none in the area. Attending that college would mean that he would need to travel a great distance. Would, you wouldn't see each other for long periods of time. So which one of these things reflect your feelings in this? Angry, mixed feelings, okay, I guess. Well, yeah. It seems as though you're trying to avoid your real feelings. There's a hesitancy and confusing that you are not owning up to. How good could anyone feel after her boyfriend has just said he's leaving to go far away for a long period of time? Well, way to damper my life. <sighs> life of a female is hard. A group of kids you hardly know have just made fun of you. Usually this might not bother you, but lately you've been feeling down in the dumps about a lot of things. Your physical appearance has been disappointing you. Your family's been giving you a hard time about almost everything. And no one seems to be saying or doing anything positive towards you. You have a bad case of the flu blues. Um, select a mood. We'll be... Well, we're not suicidal. We're feeling just fine. So let's be depressed. And let's go get drunk. Sometimes when people come depressed, they use alcohol or other substances to anth... And <laughs> I love how when something simple happens on here, this game, you know, just tears it up and makes it into something else. Okay, there's one theory about why people eventually become substance abusers. The fact that you've chosen this means of coping with depression combined with the fact that you're somewhat impulsive suggests a high probability that you'll become a drug or alcohol abuser later in life. That's why we're going to be a stripper. You were at a New Year's Eve party with the guy you were seeing, your best friend, and her date. Everyone seems to be caught up in the spirit of the holiday. When midnight strikes, you give your boyfriend a nice big hug and a kiss and turn around to wish some of your friends a happy new year. When you turn around again, you see your boyfriend and your best friend struck together in a lip lock. Um, okay, that's going to make me angry, and I'm going to say something to the girlfriend. They both look at you if you have two heads. Maybe you were overreacting. Later on in the evening, you see him with his hand on her leg. 
A little while later, dun -dun, a close friend gets mononucleosis. Because you're in such great shape, you avoid getting it. What? A what? Am I still... Okay, we're not dating Josh anymore. We're definitely dumping him because he's being an ass. Let's take a risk. You were doing some clothes shopping, and gorgeous guy keeps looking over at you, whispering to his friend and smiling. Hmm. He walks over to you, swaggeringly slightly, and introduces himself. Ooh. He eyes you up and down. Yeah, he wants the puss. Stopping at all the strategic points along the way. Ooh. He notes that you are a sharp dresser, of course. He mentions that he needs to buy a present for someone just about your size and wonder if you would consider trying on a beautiful and expensive formal gown so he can make a decision. He has a slight accent. Yeah, I'll do that. You try on the gown, he probably has a girlfriend. Who cares? He certainly does. Thanks for the help. Damn. A little while later, it's time to graduate from high school. You can't go back to the high school icon again during this game. But it's time to graduate. Oh, you have above average to superior intelligence and an excellent candidate for college. Well, obviously we're going to go to college because that's what we do. So can I do this? Oh, okay. So I don't know how we get. Can we get a job now? Now nah, let's let's see what else we can do. There has to be a way to get into college. I forgot how. A friend of yours has told you that, on the wall of one of the stalls in the boys' bathroom, Kirby Ross has written a poem about you and various sex acts that you are willing to perform. Well, you know... Uh, I don't care. Let's ignore the whole thing. Everyone knows that Kirby is the world's most immature baby. Let him write all the poems he wants. Anybody who's important knows what to believe. I probably do all that shit because I'm a whore, but you know. A friend of yours at school has gotten pregnant and has decided to get married. <laughs> I thought I graduated. The whole town is buzzing about it as if it were an awful scandal. Your mother has been gossiping about it night and day with her nosy friends. Every once in a while she tells someone on the phone, if that were my daughter, I'd lock her up until she was 25 before I ever let her on a date again. Your friend is frightened and embarrassed. One day you receive a phone call from your friend. She tells you that your boyfriend will be quitting high school and going to work full time. They will be married in three weeks. She wants to know whether you would consider being the bridesmaid at her wedding. <sighs> I'll be flattered, and I'll agree, even though I don't really believe in it. As it turns out, the wedding is small but touching. Your friend is in her mother's wedding dress, which seems too large and much too long. As you watch her walk down the aisle, you couldn't possibly imagine trading places with her. The groom looks terrified. His father rests a strong hand on his shoulder throughout the ceremony. As you eye the people who are attending, you see some of the people crying tears of happiness, and others shaking their heads and gossiping. Later in the day, you overhear a woman say, If that were my daughter, I would die. Five minutes later, she tells your friend's mother how beautiful and mature her daughter looked. Sometimes adults see too, seem so two-faced. It can make you sick. Oh my god! You've just passed through adolescence! Congratulations! Family life can be very rough during adolescence. Even though your family expects you to take charge of your life, no one wants you to let you have the freedom that you want. Judging by your progress through life so far, your family life has been quite good. All things considered, family members can be pain, but no one seems to mind it when you overhaul your hair for three hours every morning in the bathroom. Physically, you've been a healthy young woman. Accepting and being comfortable with changes the way your body looks and have been a little bit of a concern to you during this phase, but you seem strong physically. Socially, this phase of your life does present its share of problems. Most of these problems fall in the category of boys. Life must have been pretty simple before they showed up. Your social adjustments have been remarkable. Although you do not have a steady boyfriend at the present time, there's always the next life phase. Now regarding your emotional development. You are not the most trustworthy teenager around. Perhaps you can avoid getting into any more trouble than you already have by developing a better set of values. <laughs> values. Funny. It looks like you've had your share of testing the limits and doing things on the spur of the moment. It also, it also looks like some of those things haven't really turned out for the better. Risk-taking is a large part of this phase of life. You should take care that you don't it, let it evolve into plain old foolishness later. Hmm probably will. You seem to be enjoying what, mo what most of what you do. Even though you experience the blues every once in a while, it's nice to see that you're not having a depressed, traumatized life. Even though the occasional explosive outburst is common in most adolescents, you seem to have everything well under control. You seem to be sensitive and gentle. You certainly... Oh my god. You certainly have a good head on your shoulders. You are not only book smart, but also have plenty of common sense. 
Yes. Now that your adolescence is almost over, it's time to be hurled into the abyss of the real world. I bet you didn't know that everything you did so far was part of the fake world. I say that to students all the time. So we have made it to the young adulthood, where a lot of bad stuff will probably happen. The great question, which I have not been able to answer, despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is what does a woman want? Sigmund Freud, not even going to touch there. So next time we let out, we are going to be there, and oh, some of this stuff has changed. My familia has went down, intelligence has went down, physical down, social up, vocational is kind of down, my calmness, confidence have went up. Uh, happiness, my money, thoughtless spending per turn, 11. But I have a bicycle. Excellent. And this one, we can get marriage, children, work, school, relationships, and purchase. Excellent. So gamers, this has been SKS, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Alter Ego as a Female. I uh, will see you next time for Young Adulthood. Good night.